It was night outside. A predator was hiding behind a stone, ready to attack a passing person. Although the guy saw a terrible animal, he did not run away. He calmly complained that this time it was a beast. A huge monster pounced on the boy. It seemed that he would be cut in an instant by the claws of the beast, but he easily grabbed the giant by the head and slammed it into the rock with all his strength. It was boring for the hero, since such light fights did not bring pleasure. A group of people is moving through the forest. They were looking for a man, but still could not find him. The leader of the squad ordered to split up and find the guy. The man was chewing meat. He was hungry. The guy ran out of food and money. He didn't have a house either. Unexpectedly, he found a plant and was undoubtedly happy about it. This is a very rare plant, for which you can get money in full. He decided to look for more plants. Perhaps this solved his financial problem. The guy heard men's voices behind the trees. They were saying something about killing the pursuers. The guy thought they looked like robbers. Suddenly one of those people grabbed his sword and said that there was someone in the bushes where the guy was standing. He was in a tree, but he fell right in front of the man with the sword. This man was worried that the guards were watching them, and it turned out to be an ordinary guy. The leader of the group began to feel sorry for the guy they intended to kill. Suddenly, the guy said that the words spoken by the interlocutor were bullshit. He called them robbers. This angered the people. The man started shouting that they are not robbers. But the person who is their leader is the strongest man Cho J. Kong from the blood cult. The guy didn't know about this man or about the blood cult. This angered the man even more. He threatened to destroy the hero. He went to attack, but the guy with a slight movement of his foot threw him a huge distance away. He slammed into a tree. The strongest man by the name of the impressed man was very surprised. The hero also carelessly complained that he had not calculated the strength of his leg. The head of the squad could not believe what he saw. If he did not do anything now, then this person could become a bigger problem than the guard. He approached the hero and tried to hush up the matter, saying that it was all a misunderstanding. The hero called them robbers, and although this man said that they were not robbers, but the hero could not be persuaded. The nerves of the head were over. Now he was going to kill the guy. He took out his sword and went to attack but was also defeated in an instant by a light touch of his foot. Small Fry headed for the hero, but he called them on the head. The guy decided to check the bodies of the attackers and found out that they had nothing. He was upset. The man of the search party ran into the unconscious bodies of the people they were looking for. When the elder heard about this, he was shocked. He was angry since the blood cult was advancing. After a little time of their dialogue, he asked what kind of guys broke Cho J. Kong. The cult of blood attacked and stole a cart with important documents. One of the guards sent to search for the kidnappers found them unconscious. When he returned with reinforcements, the bodies were gone. The elder ordered the man to check everything again. He refused because he retired, but it was an order. The movement of hematopoiesis is serious. It was also possible that the Krotovs had formed an alliance with the demons. Their power is growing very rapidly. And the wagon they attacked was carrying secrets that only a few people knew. The man suggested that there was a traitor among them who was leaking information. The elder had no doubt about it. Right now, they couldn't figure it out. They needed to at least find the people who dealt with Cho J. Kong. The hero was walking down the street. Unfamiliar swordsmen crossed swords. They fought in a narrow building, and the battle was three on three. One of them attacked the opponent, and even though he blocked the blow, but by changing the trajectory of the sword, he was able to hit him right on the stomach with his whip. He tried to finish off the opponent, but he blocked the blow, which made a hole in the wall. 
The man hit the beam again, from which the building began to collapse, and the allies and this man began to run away. Only one of the opponents was not overwhelmed and went in pursuit. The girl who owned this house was surprised and upset at one time. She couldn't understand why her house was destroyed. Her place of residence was destroyed, and she only had a clinic left. The hero approached this clinic and was a little surprised, since it looked like an ordinary house. He opened the door, where the crying girl abruptly changed her face and greeted the client. Her name was Shin Yumi, and she was a doctor. Holding the fong of the beasts in her hand, she asked again, Is the guy here to sell this bone? He said that this is not just a bone, but a tiger claw that can be used in medicine. The girl said that there is no one who could say that this is not a fake. The guy belittled her with words that she was a bad doctor, since she could not distinguish a fake from a real bone herself. The girl screamed, so it's difficult to even learn a human body, and according to the hero, she also has to learn the bodies of all animals on earth. The hero retreated and offered the girls the herbs he had collected. She was offended and turned away. But when the guy took out the grass, she spotted it, since it was a seven-leaf ginseng. She asked where the guy found it. He asked how much the girl would buy this plant for. Usually this herb costs two or three coins, but since the girl's condition is not very good, she can buy only one. The hero said it was too cheap. The guy thought that he would cut down good money. Two more people came into the clinic. The girl introduced herself and asked them to wait a little. Two men were discussing that this clinic is like a house, and they came here because it is cheaper here. The hero said that the girl would give him a coin, as he needed something to eat. She gave the money to the guy and he left. One of the people who came had a stomach ache. The girl was going to do an acupuncture session, which was supposed to help. The man seeing the huge needles was scared and doubted whether he went there. After the terrible procedure, the men thanked the girl and said goodbye. The girl was lying on the table and thinking how good she was. Her thoughts were interrupted by a new visitor who said that something was hurting inside. The girl pushed the patient into the ward and was glad that she was very lucky, since the right medicine was in her hands. This is the plant that the hero sold. The patient asked how much it would cost, and the girl said one nong. It was expensive for this woman, but the doctor said that she could eat the plant now and pay when she had the opportunity. The girl started eating plants and called it very bitter. Suddenly, the patient's face changed. The plant she said was ginseng, and the stomach instantly passed. The doctor said that she would reconsider the price again, but the girl ran away and promised to pay as soon as she became rich. In the mountains, a man sent in search of people who defeated their enemies came across a tiger driven into the wall by the hero. People who saw something so unimaginable were surprised. The man said that the tiger was killed with one blow. It was evident from the remaining finger holes in the beast's head. The blood master, whom they had initially suspected, could not show such strength yet. The man was worried that it seemed to him that someone was posing as a blood master. People assume that the hero's goal is to start a war between the Mirim and the bloody sect. There was a man standing near the League of Mirim. He went inside, where people called him master. The main character was talking to a girl who was a doctor. They were talking about stolen ginseng. The ginseng that the hero brought was of a new kind. The hero said that he understood the girl she was already happy, but he dashed her hopes with words that she still had to pay for ginseng. The girl said that she spent all the money on the clinic, which by the way looked expensive, but the girl admitted that she was only renting it. In the end, they agreed that the guy would stay in it for the night. The hero asked for food, as they agreed on it. 
The girl was also without a home, so the two of them have to work in the same house. The hero asked if the people who destroyed the girl's house had been dealt with. She sadly replied that she had not yet, even though she had reported. The girl screamed that it was mean, but the hero somehow didn't care. A girl ran into the hospital, who begged to help her child. After the doctor examined the girl, she found out that there was too much energy in his body. The child's mother said that she ate grass in the mountains. The girl said that she could cure her, but it would not be enough, so she advised to go to a large clinic. The hero wanted to say that he could cure, but the girl interrupted him and asked him to bring tools. The girl finished. She asked the hero to inform the nearest clinic, but he did not know where she was. The hero was looking for a clinic. After a long time of searching, he found the girl's broken house. The hero climbed to the roof of a neighboring building and noticed that there were footprints. The guy followed the tracks, but they ended near the entrance to the forest. There he noticed a group of people who were fighting. The guy decided to ask them and went there. The guy was asked who he was, and the hero said that he was the one who would catch the bad guys. One of the people in blue clothes thanked the guy. The hero did not understand why they were thanking him, but he explained that they were from the Murim League. A terrible voice was heard, and the people in blue trembled. The head of the blood horse and his men were being observed by them. He started threatening the man in blue. He was thinking that they definitely need to retreat, since this chapter is the strongest of the strongest. The hero began to mock the head sarcastically parading fear. The head asked the subordinate about the hero, but only found out that he was here by accident. The hero began to be warned about how dangerous the person who is provoked by the guy is. The hero has already heard someone call the right hand of the bloody horse and said that this is not the first one he meets. The hero's words hit this man hard, and he went to him. Murim's men stood in a fighting stance and waited for something. As soon as the man got close enough to the hero, they rushed off and began to run away. The hero did not understand why the guys ran away, but they shouted in the wake that they would call the soldiers. The man was an angry escape attempt, so he jumped and ended up in front of Murim's men. He was ready to take out a sword and cut all the people in front of him. But suddenly the hero did not let him pull the sword from the scabbard with his hand. He didn't feel the hero and instinctively jumped back. After that, he intended to hold his fastest reception. A moment before the blade cut the guy's neck, he hit the man in the face, from which he flew far away and released the sword from his hands. The hero was surprised by this reception. People at first thought that the hero had collapsed, but after looking closely they saw that their boss was lying on the ground unconscious. Seeing such a picture, they were going to run away, but the hero stopped them and began to scold them for abandoning their boss. The guy asked if they had destroyed the house, but found out that they needed to be quiet. One of the people, seeing that the hero was open, was going to attack. He was behind the guy and tried to strike a direct blow, but the hero just pushed him lightly with his hand, from which he lost consciousness. The hero told what he heard that their boss was a murderer, and assumed that they were the same. They started making excuses, but for the hero, if they helped the killer, then they themselves are murderers. The next morning, the people of Nirim brought the chief, and he scolded them for abandoning their comrade. Even though the situation forced them, they will still receive punishment. The man was again interested in the question of who knocked out these people. One of the men in blue suggested a plan by which they would wake one up and question him. He tried in every way to bring people to their senses, but it was pointless. The man went to his management to report the information. It turns out those people have lost their memory of that day. 
The man was wondering whose handiwork it was, and asked if they had found out something. They only knew that in the case of these people and the tiger, it was the same person. The person assumed that this person is one of the ten world masters. He was asked if there was evidence of such words, but there were none. After they compared the places of the incidents, they realized that it was really one person, and that most likely he had no evil intentions. The hero brought an expensive piece of meat to his new home. The girl asked where he got the money, because he had not had it before. The guy said that he tamed five puppies who started stealing money for him. The girl thought it was complete nonsense, but the hero insisted that his words were true. The girl asked if the hero was sure that he had done nothing wrong. The guy was sure. The girl said once the guy had money, it was time for him to leave the clinic. The hero said that he bought pork, and he doesn't have enough money to leave now. The girl got angry, because the hero bought pork instead of paying for accommodation. She started kicking the guy out, but he asked if the girl had caught the man who ate his ginseng. The girl did not know what to answer, and while she was thinking, the hero lay down on the floor and said that he would not leave until she paid. The hero also asked how yesterday's child feels. The girl was probably fine, as she was redirected to a large hospital. The hero reflected on the actions of the girl and came to the conclusion that she is really a good doctor. The girl set the table, and the food looked delicious. The guy tried the first piece, and the girl enthusiastically asked if he liked it. The hero made a not very happy face and asked if it was really pork. The girl started yelling at the guy again. In Nurem, the actions of the hero were discussed again, and in the end, they were considered excessively dangerous. The girl went to the Nurem building and asked if they had sorted out the issue of the breakdown of her house. The man began to excuse himself that they had a lot of work and they were working on the girl's question, and hinted that she should be paid so that they would sort out the issue faster. The girl was angry because she had already paid, and they were asking her for even more money. She was noticed by a guy who is investigating situations created by the hero. He paid attention to the girl, but decided to go about his business anyway. The senior instructor approached the man who had just asked for money and asked for the girl. He told the whole situation and who this girl was. The bribe taker and a colleague discussed the instructor. His name is Quan Sinho, Shadow's Sword. The girl came to the clinic where her friend met her. She immediately got down to business and asked how the child she started treating and referred to them. A friend said that thanks to the girl, the child is in perfect order. A friend hugged the girl and said that if she succeeds, she will immediately return the girl. She started to leave and said that she already has her own clinic. A friend shouted that they should have a housewarming party. At the same time, muddy people were examining the girl's hospital, which was empty. They decided to go out for a drink and come back later. The girl and her friend were just going to the hospital. The men examined the girls, and one of them was definitely up to something. The girl told her friend not to expect much, but she was still interested in seeing her friend's hospital. One of the guys accidentally collided with the girl's whip and fell himself. He started screaming. The second man came up and began to put moral pressure on an innocent girl. The girl said she was a doctor, but the man wouldn't let her in. He demanded to take his brother to a large clinic, but first he demanded money for treatment. She was ready to pay, but a friend intervened. The man again began to verbally put pressure on the girls and decided to proceed to physical assault. His blow was stopped by the hero, who broke his bone and started screaming. The girl yelled at the hero for breaking a man's arm. The girl ran up to the man and asked if he was okay. The hero looked threateningly at the man and also asked if he was okay. 
After the guy's words, the man jumped up and said that it didn't hurt at all. The hero looked at the second Serkak, and he jumped up. People apologized and ran away. The girl was worried about men, and the hero did not understand this. Since they were bad, she was only worried about the man's broken arm. A friend got into the conversation and started asking the girl who her boyfriend is. As a result, the girl called him a schizoid. After such words, the girl thanked the hero for his help. The hero said that instead of words of gratitude, she should act. The girl didn't understand what he was talking about, but the guy said he wanted meat. They talked and the girl asked what the guy wanted for lunch. He chose a fish, which his friend was very happy about. The man came to one person who yelled at him because he asked to bring a drink. He took out a bag of coins, which the man was very happy about and said that he had done a great job. The hero and the girls finished the meal. The guy was very upset that he couldn't get enough at all. A friend supported the guy's words, but he yelled at her since she already ate the most. She took out the money, and the hero was shocked. He quickly took the coins and ran to the store for meat. The girl called him funny, and the friend is pretty cute. 